Today I'm very excited because inside these boxes is the equipment I need to extract and harvest the honey from my beehives. I've been working towards this moment for the last 12 months. Stay tuned to see the whole honey extracting process. This is a honey extractor. You can see in there, that's where the frames go. And then you can spin the frames round and it shakes the honey out. You might be wondering why I have invested in this sort of equipment when I could have just, you know, borrowed a local beekeeper's equipment just for the very small amount of honey that I have to harvest. Well, it's because I've got big dreams and high hopes for the coming years when Alex's honey turns into a multi-million pound business. All jokes aside, I don't have a clue what this thing is. Oh no, it's the legs. Three legs for the extractor. Okie dokie. There are a few other helpful tools when harvesting honey, and that's what I hope to find in these other boxes. Bucket. And here I've got a couple of different sizes of like sieve. So the honey flows out the bottom of the extractor with loads of wax mixed in. It then goes through this sieve into the finer sieve, filters out as much of the wax and solids as possible, leaving this bucket full of hopefully very nice clear honey. Now I'm a little bit obsessed with knives and I've just bought myself a new one, but this is the first time I've ever bought a uncapping knife. This thing is for uncapping the wax that covers the honey on a frame. It's a serrated knife, which makes it easier to cut with. And you basically just cut the cappings off and then the frame is ready to put inside the extractor. So there's all the tools for extracting honey. Now comes the hard part. I've actually got to go into the beehives and uh, take the honey off and extract it. One year ago, I started keeping bees. I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but beekeeping has been one of the biggest learning curves, one of the most fascinating projects I've ever worked on. And it's also been the most long-term project. It wasn't a simple case of getting bees and quickly getting some honey. I've, I've had to work with the bees and look after them in such a way that they are healthy enough and strong enough to produce some extra honey for me to take. It sure hasn't been easy. In the spring, all was going well. I managed to divide one hive into two hives. And then I went on holiday, which was a really bad idea. I went on holiday from May to June, and that is prime swarming season. So I got back home from holiday to see that most of my bees had actually left and swarmed, meaning that there was a lot less honey in the hives and there were a lot less bees to make more honey. So the honey harvest that I'm gonna to do today is so much smaller than it could have been if I had known what I was doing. But that's all part of the learning process, I guess. Next year, we won't have those problems and uh, we should get even more honey. So today I'm gonna to take off some honey from the hives, bring it into the kitchen where I've got all the equipment set up and ready to do my first honey extraction ever. <laughs> I'm so excited. That top box here, is really light. Like there's there's hardly any honey in this one. There is plenty of honey in there. So let's just take a look and see how the frames look. Oh wow. So this, this is what we're looking for. This frame is full of honey. Well not completely. Ideally it would be right to the edge, but it's mostly full. Now something I was wondering quite a lot about is how do I know that the honey is ready to take out? You don't want to collect an apple from a tree when it's not ripe yet. And in the same way, you don't want to take the honey off the hive before it's turned into proper honey. Because otherwise the moisture content can be too high and then it can ferment. Because basically honey is just nectar with, the, with much of the moisture removed. Now when you see the wax cappings like this, the bees are basically telling us that it's ready to take. They've capped it over ready to store and it won't ferment. So this whole frame here, I can take this from the hive. Now of course, I don't wanna bring that whole box of honey inside the house with all the bees in. 
So there's a few ways you can remove those bees. There's something called a escape board or clearer board and it's basically just a piece of wood with these little devices where the bees can go one way but then they can't get back the other way. So you put it underneath the honey box, the bees go down and then they can't get back up. So it basically clears the super of bees. Now I only have two hives to deal with so I'm probably just gonna take the frames out that I want to extract and then shake as many bees off as I can. A Swedish beekeeper who I saw uses these a lot to get lots of the bees out and then he actually uses a blower to get the last of the bees out which is another interesting way of doing it. I just took that honey into the house where it is bee tight because obviously when you're carrying around a box full of nice sugary sweet stuff lots of bees can find it and cause all sorts of problems so I put it in the house lock the doors yeah just so we don't have bees going all over that honey it's safe I've got it I feel like a bear I've just stole my honey and now I'm trying to keep it safe so this hive here that was the original hive that I got that's where I put my first lot of bees in but when they swarmed and I caught them at the tree, the swarm went into this box. And this box has actually ended up doing, I think, better than the original one. They just seem to be working harder. Don't really know why. Look at that. I can already see there's more bees in here. See, that one's got a bit of weight, not massive. And this one's also got about the same. There's quite a lot of frames which haven't got anything like this. So I'm just gonna try and separate them and just get one box which has got full frames. Okay, whoa. There we go, we've got two boxes of honey in the kitchen. Right, let's take a little gander at some of this honey. Interestingly, every frame is a bit different. For example, this one, they've kept lots of honey around there, but then they've stored pollen in this bit here. So they haven't got any stores inside there. I can hear a bee inside. And it's the same the other side. And then some frames are just so incredible. Look at that. That is just beautiful. Like, this is really heavy as well. This is my uncapping station. So this is the bucket which all the wax cappings go in. And this little thing that I just made goes on top. The frame of honey rests in the hole and then I can scrape off the wax cappings and they'll just fall off into the bucket. And then the honey frame goes inside here. This bucket can go underneath and then these are a couple of filtering sieves which go over the bucket. I've got a couple of tools to uncap the honey. This is an uncapping knife. You simply slide that along and cut the wax off. But then sometimes you miss bits and this is an uncapping fork. You can just scrape across the cappings, break them open so that then they will come out of the extractor. Shall we extract my first frame of honey ever? There we go everyone, Alex's first frame of honey. And then there's like these bits on the corner which haven't been broken open so I'm just scraping them. And then I can spin this round. And then this can go inside the extractor. Possibly the most satisfying thing I've ever done. This is a three frame extractor, so you can put three frames in it and it's now full. So I guess it's time to do some spinning. I messed up a little bit. I realized if you spin it too fast, 
and the comb actually breaks. Yeah, I, I managed to ruin one of the frames. That's what happens if you try and spin it too fast. So cool. You see that? It's all the honey is gone. You're just left with the just a wet frame of wax. See that at the bottom? That is honey. Now I've got to do all of those. This can go back in there. We're gonna do something quite cool with that later on. So I've realized each frame kind of has to be dealt with a little bit differently because this one, the comb extends outwards of the wood, which means I can cut it with the uncapping knife. But some of the frames, they are built kind of inwards, which means that uncapping knife doesn't get to cut them off, which is why I have to use the fork. Yeah, like I can't cut that. So I have to use the fork to scrape the cappings out. That is just so satisfying. <sighs> Look at that. Like, it just feels amazing. Smells amazing. It is just totally amazing. Bees are awesome. And I'm so glad I became a beekeeper last year because it has given me so much enjoyment. And the reward that I'm feeling now is just ridiculous. I, when you work towards something for a year, I guess the longer you work towards something, the, the better it feels when you finally get there. This is such a rewarding, fulfilling feeling, harvesting this honey that I've been waiting so long for. And this is probably one of the best looking frames. That's epic. Extractor is getting quite full of honey now. So at the bottom you can see the, the frames are actually touching the honey when it spins. So I need to undo that valve and let some of it into the strainer. Oh my goodness. That is my honey. Watching this honey flow out of the valve is just the most mesmerizing incredible thing ever. <laughs> so now both these boxes are full of really wet, sticky frames. And instead of cleaning them up myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them back on to the beehives and then they will collect all the drippings and then store it back up again very neatly. So I'm going to open this valve and while they let it drip through and filter, I'm gonna go in the garden and put those boxes back on the hive. We're gonna put the wet honey super on top of the hive lid. So the bees will take all the honey that's dripping off of this and put it into their boxes below. Then once these frames are cleaned by the bees, I can then take the boxes off and then put them into storage for the winter. So what am I gonna do with all these wax cappings? Cause there's quite a bit of honey in the bottom and then also just a load of wax that is very useful for many things such as polishing your shoes or making candles or rubbing on your surfboard so you have more grip. There's many good uses and I want to, I want to get that out of there. As you can see, the wax now it's set, it's got loads of bits in, like the bits of 
propolis and uh, pollen and we don't want that in there so I'm gonna melt it down again and then strain it through a t-shirt. I've just realized as I'm straining this wax, this takeaway tub, that you get very little wax compared to honey. But this little tub here, that'll do me. And there's a bucket of honey and that is pretty heavy. That's all pure honey. That is all pure fine Sussex honey. And all of that came from one hive. Uh, two. Oh, you drained both of them? Yeah. Poor bees. Today I've managed to get hold of one of the UK's finest honey critics. No, fishing YouTubers. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just a fisherman. And he has some weighing scales because i want to see how much honey we've got because it's something to brag about you know when i go down the pub and see my mate I'm like yeah harvested do you know how 200, much honey 200 kilos of honey from my bees 200 kilos i know we're gonna find out oh 12 13 12 and a half my bees made 12 kilograms of honey that's the most satisfying thing ever Amazing. Honey is incredible. Okay, Carl, it's time to taste it. You can see why Bear Grylls climbed up that mountain and like <laughs> hacked into the highs to get at honey because it's really worth it. What well, actually is honey? It is nectar. Is it bees been... poo? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm glad it isn't. This is just nectar which has been dehumidified. It's gone through the bee though, hasn't it? The and bee has taken it in, the other side. and then it no, it, it, it but takes it in through the for its tongue, yeah, and then it puts it back in the cells, like in the frame. So it's, it's and then they flap their wings over it and pass air over it to evaporate the water. So it's nectar without any water in it. It's got nineteen percent moisture content. Oh, so I tested it. There's it? not very much okay. moist water. No. Anyway, cheers, Carl. There's your honey. Oh, you're actually giving yeah, it you to can, me. You can have the first jar because you are my brother. Now, I want to give everyone who has been following along on this beekeeping journey a jar of my honey. But unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to have enough. And first, I need to prioritize friends and family. Let's start filling these jars. There you go, mum and dad. That one's for the grandparents, uncles, aunties. And this one is gonna be for a girl that I really like. 15 jars of honey, and we haven't even done half of it. There you go, dad. Oh wow! It's yours. Is that honey? I think so. Alex honey. Alex honey. Bee honey. Wow. Amazing. Mm. That's <laughs> lovely. It's good, isn't it? Mm. Is that all mine? It's all yours. As you can see, the hives have now shrunk down. I've taken off the supers and there's just the brood box underneath. That is the box that they will live in in the winter. The winter months are a rather quiet time for a beekeeper. There's not a huge amount to do. I've got to, of course, check that they've got enough food over the course of the next few months. And if they don't, then I can give them some sugar syrup or baker's fondant, which is a solid form of sugar. I have checked the Varroa destructor mite levels. Uh, basically, they're a blood-sucking mite that can cause a colony of bees to collapse if there's too many of them. But uh, luckily, there's still not a serious level or not high enough that I need to give them treatment at the moment. But I will keep an eye on that. And I've just got to make sure the hives are waterproof and make sure that they are free from the damp and the cold. I think this winter I'll do some planning for next season. I've got to decide where I want this beekeeping to go because I could expand this beekeeping project. I could have a few more hives, meaning I get a larger honey harvest, which means I can have more honey to sell. 
I've just got to find some people who are willing for me to put some beehives on their land because my dad doesn't want any more bees in his garden. So if you happen to be in the Sussex area and you wouldn't mind me putting some bees on your land, drop me a message, uh, head over to my Instagram or email me, uh, let me know, because it'd be quite cool to expand this beekeeping project and have some more bees. I suppose the good thing about beekeeping is that the next few months and over the winter, there's not a great deal to do, which means I can do some more traveling and go on holiday. And I've got some really exciting things planned. Very soon I'm going to travel around Europe in my van. I wanna to go to Switzerland, Slovenia, Austria, Germany, and hopefully many other countries. Then from November onwards, I'm basically living in Austria. I am renting this hut in the mountains. It's in the Austrian Alps. It is the most beautiful place. I actually went there last Christmas for five days and I loved it so much, so I'm gonna go back there. I'm going to challenge myself and see how I fare at uh, living in the mountains and living in isolation. I'm hoping friends and family will come and join me for a little bit, but yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be an interesting time this winter. And then next spring, I'm hoping, or my plan is to come back to England and focus on the beekeeping again, because the beekeeping season, sort of when you have to be around, focusing on the bees is from sort of March through till September. So I'll probably try and stay home for, for that time. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed watching my beekeeping journey. I will see you next time.